Hello. Oh, sweet. Well, some is actually kind of bitter as well, if you go up high in the percentage of pure uh, cocoa. But uh, someone has to make this, right? And someone is making it. And here's where King Chocolate comes into the picture. This is a game about producing and selling cocoa beans. Or is it? Ha. Huh. Let's find out. In this game, every player gets one screen to hide their stuff behind. And in this game, you get more screens than they are. Uh, it is possible to play. Also, not all of the screens match the colors of the meeples you get. So, kind of strange. Anyway, on the back here, you can see the rules or the actions you can do. And one of those actions contradicts a rule in the rule box. So we have two things that are off right at the moment. Anyway, you see you have one, two, three, four, five, six with uh, the Roman uh, numbers here. Well, just not the Roman, just marks because it's not Roman. Uh, to show uh, how far in the process you are. So, as an action, well, before I can do my stuff, I have to play a tile. So I can take one tile from behind my screen and play it anywhere where it is allowed. For example, here, or even better, here. The next thing I can do is three actions, and those are explained here. You see, uh, I can draw a tile because I have to draw a tile, or else I will lose a turn, or I have to draw a tile depending on what rules you play by. Mm. Sounds odd, because, yeah. Uh, or I can produce cocoa, cocoa, cacao uh, on the ones here. So I just fill each circle with a cacao, cacao bean. Uh, or I can take a worker and move him from one place to another. Or I can take a worker from here, from my play area, and place it anywhere available. And suddenly, chocolate will appear. It's like just magically grew chocolate here. Okay, forget about the theme. The theme sucks. It, it doesn't. It, it is no, no theme here at all. It's, it's horrible. It's. Ah, no production. Everything is kind of not thematically. So, and these workers, they're not workers, they're just tokens to say that it's my area. So, if you ignore the theme, then we can start talking about the game. If you want the theme, go find something else. Okay. Well, eventually the board will grow bigger, of course, because you will expand with new tiles. Uh, and you can th then start moving tokens around, or workers around, or property markers, I call them. So, from, for instance, here I have, if I'm a yellow, I have a yellow here on a 4 value. So I can move from 4 to 5. So where is 5? Uh, this is a 5, okay, and this is a 5. Purple. So I can move this to either here or here. So, two tokens equals two points, and I put them here because no one is claiming this area. I don't want to give points to blue, or potential points. Uh, you get points from where you move the cubes from, not to. So, by moving it here, I don't give points to anyone at the moment. I can even move them further, from a 5 to a 6. Let's see here, 6. No one owns this either, so I get two more points. And then I can move them off the board for additional two points. So, hooray! Or, I can just move a worker here, like so and claim this area. Uh, or I can just produce new cocoa beans here, and so forth. Uh, the coloring here, these tiles, they are kind of hard to distinguish from each other. Uh, I would much prefer if it just was a number. Also, the circles here, they indicate how many uh, cubes you can put there, but with the circles and meeple and the color, I Everything is just get noisy, and every player is just looking at the board and looking. Where is number four? Ah, oh, there's number four. Okay, do I have number three? No, I don't have. Okay, uh, it is very counterintuitive with this layout. It looks pretty, it does, but ah, I I don't really can I can't really work with it. But this game is about getting points, and uh, you have four workers, and there are six production steps here. So of course you can't. Uh, conquer all the steps, you have to depend on other players, so you get in a kind of king-making situations. You have to pay attention to how many points people have getting into and you kind of remember how many points they have, and you're gonna decide, do you give points to you or to him? Okay, this turn I'm gonna give points to you because I don't think you have enough points, or I don't care. For me, this game it's kind of interesting, but it really falls flat. Well, the game is... it is a game. 
Well, uh, the first time I played this, uh, we went in with the theme. We're gonna make chocolate. And uh, we started playing it and the rules just... Are we really producing chocolate? Just moving stuff around and uh, cubes and tokens, me meeples or ruggers. And everything was just flat. We nobody liked this game. It was horrible. So, the next time I went in with it and thought, okay, drop the theme. There is no theme here. And, well, we kind of had an okay time. It was a fine game. But I really don't... For me, it just feels flat. It's uh, You have choices, you do, but it seems so constricted to... I'm going to give you points or him points. And if I don't get points from you guys, well, I won't win. So I have to place my workers on available spots, if there are any. And that depends on what tiles are available to, for me to draw. And if nobody uh, stops me or stops my my area from growing by placing tiles there, that doesn't match. So, uh, now this, this game is very bittersweet for me because it just... Ah, uh, I can't. I can't really recommend this game. No, I can't. Uh, it's fine as an abstract game, just fine, nothing more. And I'm just not having fun playing it. Uh, so, well, there you have it, King Ch Chocolate. Uh, don't make chocolate here. Just move stuff around on a board. Okay, thanks for watching this episode of Attackers Reviews. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this uh, little game. And uh, until next until next time, don't eat too much chocolate, okay? See ya.